Mesdames et messieurs, chers amis, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, Madame Chair, who'll come back? No, no, she's here. You're here. Sorry, I wanted to say how delighted I am to participate in this 11th uh, conference organized by FFA after this wonderful evening, gala evening last night. It's been uh, the fourth uh, conference for me and the first conference for you, dear Florence, and jointly with Bena Delas, I send my best wishes for success uh, to you at the helm of this uh, great French insurance association. On our side, things are moving, and I would like to uh, uh, hail uh, the uh, appointment of Dominique Labourex as the um, uh, at the position of uh, uh, Secretary General to ACPR. I love your title, uh, which has been especially well chosen, ensuring uh, the long-term success in a world of short term, which summarizes, in a nutshell, the nice business and fine business of the insurance uh, operations. I would like to, uh, to pay tribute to the 710 and 12 insurance companies um, with uh, some 2.6 trillion uh, euros of investments. And the French market has become, or became in 2018, the uh, first European market in front of the UK and Germany with respect to uh, the uh, total assets um, and also experience good uh, momentum with uh, its uh, revenues up 3% year on year. Now you are left with a number of uh, questions, right? And a number of concerns. And I don't think I will be wrong by focusing on two major concerns, uh, the low rate environment and uh, the ambitions and objectives of uh, reviewing and revising Solvency 2. Now, with respect to the uh, low rate environment, I will start with the northern face. And I will do so as I understand that you've had Jacques de la Rosière introducing uh, these days' conference. As everyone, I have immense respect uh, for Jacques de la Rosière and for everything he's achieved in the past. But, 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 if uh, I may, dear Florence, uh, with respect to the agendas of the upcoming conferences in the years to come, I think you should also invite another uh, great personality, a uh, great uh, public official, that is Jean-Claude Trichet, who actively participated in the setting uh, of uh, monetary policy in the last uh, two decades. And you can read this in the Le Monde article of the 22nd of October. The attacks uh, against ECB, uh, the ECB are not uh, targeting the right uh, target. And um, It seems that uh, there would be hopes for the future uh, new governor that I am. There's a life uh, uh, at FFA after uh, the chairmanship of uh, Banque de France, and I know this. Now, more seriously, I have uh, set the limits that uh, should be that of the monetary uh, policy of the ECB. And uh, um, I want to say why the low rates are necessary and why they will be a lasting phenomenon and why and how we should adapt to it. Now, let us be clear. I hear and I understand your concerns with respect to this uh, low rate environments, but let us lose sight of the long term economic prospects because the long rates are not only the result of uh, uh, monetary policies. They are first the result of uh, some long-term structure, structural trends which uh, are related with a new equilibrium uh, with high levels of savings and low levels of investments. And this change is the result of aging of the population and the slowdown of uh, manufacturing output productivity. And the low rates reflect the historically low levels of what the economists call the natural interest rate or R star. Having engaged in this uh, starry poetry, um, I would say that the star is going down by some two percentage points, has been doing so in the last 15 years in the euro area as it has in the US. So much for the long term. Now let us focus on the short term because the... Uh, uh, 
uh, insurers as the bankers are not uh, uh, living in a world uh, which is isolated and we are experiencing an economic slowdown uh, with causes uh, uh, largely uh, f due to uh, some geopolitical issues according to the IMF global growth would uh, um, record its uh, lowest historical level uh, at 3% since the uh, 08 09 crisis. So the Eurozone has been uh, hardly impact impacted, mainly due to the uh, role of uh, Germany and place of Germany with a 0.3% growth for Germany this year. A better piece of good news is that our country of France has been resisting much better with 1.3% of uh, growth scheduled this year as it should be for next year. Now, the French economy is not an island, and uh, I would like to say a few words on Brexit. Even though there is a, uh, an agreement uh, uh, today, which uh, was signed today, everything will remain to be negotiated with respect to the commercial agreement. So I would like to um, um, make the distinction between the withdrawal agreement and the commercial agreement. Everything remains to be done with the commercial agreement, including the financial section. And the Brexit uncertainty is a lasting fa factor. And the monitoring of the uh, implementation of the contingency plans uh, should make us confident in the French insurance industry. We are prepared to face up with each and all types of scenarios, all of us here in this room. Now, with respect to this prolonged uncertainty context, this requires that there is an accommodating monetary policy to continue. It will be uh, silly to uh, hike up the rates today. When demand is uh, to be propped up, uh, which is the result of too low an inflation, you need to maintain active monetary policies. And this is the purpose, and this is possibly the most uh, important decision which was made in early September, which the Council of Governors uh, confirmed it, that is the uh, reinforcing of our forward guidance. So the novelty is not the low rate environment, nor it is the negative rate, which some seems to be, uh, seem to be discovering, which have been the reality in a number of countries for a number of years. The novelty is that the low rate environment will be lasting and ought to be lasting given the global economic slowdown. As we all are realistic people, we should acknowledge this and uh, then we should adapt to it. The current uh, low rate environment also has positive impacts. And I'm not denying any of the difficulties, but the positive factors should not be underestimated. If the ECB had not taken action, there would be today in between one point and one and a half points uh, inflation rate less for 2015-2018, but there would be less growth on the order of 2.5 less growth, that is less employment as is today. The insurance industry, similarly to the banking industry, uh, um, uh, is interested in this better, improved economic uh, environment. In uh, Since 2013, 11 million jobs were created, not all being the result of the monetary policies, but a significant uh, part of this, and I would like to say a few words, about Mario Draghi, who sees his uh, term expire next Thursday. He was more than a great uh, president of the ECB. He was a great servant of Europe, and we should uh, tip our hat off to him. However, there are difficulties remaining. It is mechanical. Uh, there is a mechanical effect that the uh, low rates um, put uh, the uh, coverage ratio under pressure. The solvency ratio for the French insurers was stable, around 240% on average for France, but the first half of uh, 2019 saw a significant reduction of this ratio to 225% in late June. This level remains very high. It testifies to the good resilience overall of the French insurance companies. It gives them, especially it gives you, it gives us all, um, the idea of uh, how long and how uh, strong we can adapt. For the last few years already, the impact of the low rates on the solvency situations of insurance companies, especially those exposed to long-term risk, has been a priority by the regulators and the supervisors. The uh, ACPR supervisor even enhanced it today by doing uh, so-called a permanent enhanced monitoring, permanent 
uh, and enhanced monitoring uh, by, uh, by the uh, supervisor to the most uh, fragile institutions. In this context, I call on the insurance companies to, um, um, to reinforce uh, their uh, efforts in two areas, diversifying their product models and uh, the reduction in uh, the, uh, um, uh, the, uh, and the returns. Uh, the, the returns have gone down by 17 uh, po um, basis points since 20. 11. Uh, it should, uh, it, it should, this should be continued and reinforced. Let us be clear, to face up to their long-term uh, commitments in a secured manner, insurance companies must uh, pass on the, uh, low, uh, the lower returns on the fees uh, 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 and income delivered to the postal policyholders. And the uh, rates delivered are still high, 1.8% on average. There is leeway still while preserving positive uh, income um, and fees given to their clients. Second area, only the diversification of products and services will make it possible to uh, maintain the, the yield objectives over the long term. The unit link products account for one third, one fourth of uh, the um, premiums, but only account for 7% uh, of net inflows. So there are currently discussions on new subscriptions. Let me say a few words on this. With respect to the existing contracts, uh, the um, premiums and uh, the incomes should be in compliance with the existing contract. With respect to new business, they, sh uh, they should not uh, dilute uh, the uh, income uh, delivered to the old uh, euro fund policyholders. There's a duty of advice from us here. They should be personalized, customized with respect to the situation of each client and its uh, situation. But good advice is never or never or uh, rarely to be to uh, um, fully invest into the euro fund or fully invest into the unit link product. I'm calling on your ability to innovate and I know you have good ability to do that in order to promote uh, offerings and solutions with the euro growth and uh, the savings products which could form a range of investment products uh, with uh, well controlled risks which would be in between the unit link products and the euro fund products and we at ACPR are ready to facilitate uh, these initiatives by supporting all requests uh, to provide uh, regulatory adjustments without uh, excluding recalibrating the taxation uh, systems applicable to the various products. So much for the low rate. Now, let me uh, speak about uh, the Solvency II regime. I would recall that the Solvency II regime has been the most ambitious reform ever designed and developed and applied to the insurance industry. This new regulatory framework is based on uh, an approach to cover all of the risk which uh, insurance companies are exposed to and it undeniably made the European market stronger. Having said that, and this is something that you've been experiencing day in, day out, the prudential requirements under Solvency II are, uh, um, are too complex uh, and, uh, and too relative. So to remedy this, let us uh, seize the opportunity which is offered to us by this 22-2021 uh, 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 review and revision of the directive to promote four key priorities, according to me. The first priority is that the solvency uh, to review and revision, uh, um, all things being equal to uh, increasing the... Uh, um, the um, uh, capital um, uh, adequacy requirements uh, across Europe. S number two, it would be counterproductive to artificially reduce the capital adequacy requirements by uh, renouncing uh, investments into equities. But despite uh, good progress made in 2018, this asset class, that of equities, remains penalized. So we call for a reduction of the shock applied to the various uh, uh, equity classes so that the standard is better interpreted and so that the capital charge is reduced. The minister uh, said this uh, very vocally this afternoon and I will not add anything to what he said. Third priority, the uh, weight of the risk margin is on average 30% of the capital uh, 
um, requirements in Europe and this weight uh, should be reduced, uh, this burden should be reduced. The current calculation method is extremely cautious and penalizes the provision of long-term insurance products like savings products, pension products and uh, protection, health protection products. Fourth and last, prior and last priority is something we don't speak too much about, but we must uh, go uh, towards more simplification. I will quote a nice sentence by Paul Valery, who is a very well uh, known uh, specialist of insurance. What is simple, and you can use it even for other things that solvency too, what is uh, simple is always uh, wrong, what is not is useless. And uh, all of us basically uh, have been uh, navigating between uh, these two ends of the uh, Paul Valery statement. This should uh, call on us that we simplify the standards and converge the supervisory practices. Let me give you a few concrete examples. Alleviating the burden of reporting and the requirements on uh, low risk activities on a more structural level. I think of the, uh, the um, um, calculation uh, models uh, uh, which are too complex uh, and which don't, uh, don't make um, uh, balance sheets uh, easy to understand and to read. Now, I would add a few words on IFRS 17. I know it's not a priority uh, with the Solvency 2, but the premature uh, deployment of, of IFRS uh, 17 would not be welcome. Let us give time to time. Let us uh, give the you insurer some respite so that you can embrace and develop ownership for the current regulations and that you can anticipate and plan ahead for the pu future requirements. And this uh, uh, the IASB would take this respite to fully uh, onboard the uh, European uh, um, concerns in this low rate environment. I would wrap up by, sh by sharing my conviction with you and I hope uh, that uh, you are sharing it with me. The various priorities I've just mentioned, I could have mentioned others, we are owning up to them collectively for the insurance industry as well as for protecting the consumers and the policyholders. We have collective ownership for them in order to prepare for the future and face up uh, to these colossal, these gigantic investment needs and requirements. Beyond the low rate environment, the insurance uh, practitioners have a key role to play in this world, which uh, um, more than being a short term landscape, is uh, engaged in a deep change. I could have uh, added to what was said on climate change, on digital change, on the digital revolution, but one thing is certain. Yes, this uh, changing world needs insurance and ever more insurance. As we heard Enrico Letta with great pleasure, I would like to end this conference with a quotation from Enrico Letta, and I'm turning to Franco Borsellini and a few words. The uh, book by Enrico is called Il Molino, The Windmill. I, I will quote uh, a Chinese proverb, but I suspect that he imagined the proverb, in fact, Enrico. The proverb is a very uh, simple one. When the wind blows strong, you have those who build walls and you have those who build windmills. The wind is blowing very strongly today. Let us try today to build windmills and no walls. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your dedication.